Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the NZXT software known as NZXT Cam, which, if you've got a motherboard such as this one from NZXT, you may want to take advantage of. Also, if you've got other NZXT components, peripherals, etc., such as their Kraken coolers, some of their air cooling fans, and other NZXT products which fit into the CAM ecosystem. Now, we're going to be taking a look at this from the perspective of somebody owning a motherboard and trying to do things like control fans and also how to add other additional addressable RGB devices to the system and try and get it all to synchronize up together. Now, I should say straight away, if you're looking for a way of actually getting RGB RAM to synchronize with the NZXT CAM software, unfortunately, that isn't going to happen. There is a definite hard stop when it comes to that. NZXT are 100% not going to be supporting any addressable RGB RAM for the foreseeable future. So if you do want to synchronize your RAM with your motherboard, such as this one, then you will need additional software to do that. And obviously you will have to make tweaks to each piece of software to get them to actually look like they're in sync. So do bear that in mind. There are of course other options such as Signal RGB and also Open RGB, which potentially you can get away with doing, but we're not gonna be covering that in this video. So we'll start off here on the desktop and this is the NZXT webpage. So nzxt.com. And if you go into the CAM section, you can see here it tells you where it is and how to download it. There's two versions of CAM. There's a beta version, which you can use, or the regular release. We're going to be looking at the regular release here. Obviously, if you've got the beta version, it's going to be very similar. The layout may be slightly different, but you should get the general idea of how it works. So if you do need to download it, download it here. Links will be in the video description also. So if you want to do that, do that. Make sure that it's installed and ready. And uh, yeah, we'll get straight into taking a look at the software. So let's minimize this window. When you run CAM for the first time, this is the kind of look you're gonna get. Now, I've actually set this into dark mode, which some people may prefer. We will be showing you how to configure that as well. So normally it's in light mode, but I've set it to dark mode to make it a little bit more easy to read. So first of all, let's take a quick tour around what we've got on the sections here. So you obviously you've got the minimize and close options there. You've also got alarm bell there, notification center. You also got your active profiles of which as default, it comes up with, you guessed it, default. You can create new profiles. I've actually created one here called purple, which is purple lighting. And also if you want to, you can go in here and click add a profile, click on that. You can call it whatever you want to. So let's call it in this instance, let's call it mub, mic's unboxing, hit save and then it will basically open up in your new profile. It will reset all your lighting and most of your fan controls other than the defaults. But we'll cover that a little bit more as we go through. So that is the profile section. On the main monitor page, usual stuff here. So CPU information, GPU information, your RAM load, network, storage, and current processors that are running. Now, if for some reason you don't like this and you don't want necessarily possibly your network or storage here. You can configure this to your own liking. So if you go into settings, you can actually go in and choose which panels are available. So let's uh, take a look at the settings panel now. So you've got the options for your language. You've also got your temperature display. So if you're in the United Kingdom or perhaps in uh, Europe, you may want to use Celsius. If you're in the United States, then you may feel more comfortable using Fahrenheit. You can toggle between the two. Also options we've got here. So you've got the option to minimize NZXT cam to the tray when you close it. So even if we uh, close this now, if we then go ahead and look on the tray, it is still there. So we can just double click it and it will open up where it was. We've also got the option to start NZXT cam on Windows startup. If you're using this to control lighting and also fan speeds, I would suggest leaving that enabled so it does run on startup. We've also got the option to start NZXT cam minimized when launching on Windows Startup. Again, I would recommend leaving that as it is. So it's running, but it's minimized to the task tray. And also here, this is one we talked about a little bit earlier. This is dark mode. So you can, if you want to enable that. If not, you get this, which is a little bit on the bright side. You can choose whichever suits you. I'm gonna go back to dark mode. Something else which is pretty cool here, if you're somebody who regularly installs and uninstalls Windows and makes tweaks, etc., you can actually export and import settings. So if you've created a profile and you want to save it, you can obviously do export and you can save it to a file and vice versa, you can also import. So you click on import, you can just find the file. It is gonna be in the NZXT CAM folder. 
for exporting. Again, same deal, just uh, call it what you want. So let's call this MUB and click on save. There we go, we have saved our profile. You can, of course, if you want to, save it to the desktop or save it to OneDrive so you can keep a backup of it. Moving down, like I said, so you've got the option for panels here. So PC monitoring, system specs, lighting, cooling, keyboard, mouse, capture card, and monitor. So these are all the ones which are in your side panel. So if we say, for instance, remove mouse, it will remove the mouse from the side section and monitor, etc. So when we go back into our main settings, you can see now mouse and the other one have actually gone. Let's put all those back. And you see, they've come back now. So you can tweak those a little bit, should you wish to. And also you've got the option there for privacy, whether or not you want NZXT Cam to collect, report, and analyze information about specific application performance and usage. You can obviously opt out of that. If you want to opt out for privacy, then you can remove that and it will stop sending information back. So back to the front screen, so back to PC monitoring. This is kind of the home page effectively. So also we've got things like system specs. So if you're interested in your system specs and you want a quick rundown of what you've actually got installed or you're not too sure, or maybe you're asking for support somewhere and someone says, well, what motherboard have you got or what graphics card have you got? You can find all that information here in quite a handy format. Also talks about the greater details such as your CPU, the type, clock speeds, etc. So if you go into graphics card, it'll tell you clock speeds and all the kind of things you want to know there. So that is quite useful. Lighting is the next section. So this is going to be one where some of you are actually going to be primarily watching this video to find out how to figure this stuff out. And it is actually quite complicated. So currently we're in the default lighting profile. So this is one which I've kind of pre-configured. You've also got options in here. So there are default options or preset options, I should say. So there is an option for white. So this will set your RGB fans to white, which uh, possibly you're seeing from the video. I'll try and include as much of this as I actually can. So you've also got options for Spectrum Wave, which is the kind of unicorn puke. And also you've got NZXT Purple. So if you want to rock the NZXT Purple look, then you certainly can do. So that is a kind of basic overview. If you want to, you can go into the settings there and you can actually change the individual LEDs, etc. In order to actually program the LEDs, so this is if you've actually got additional addressable RGB or 12 volt RGB headers on your motherboard, such as we do with the N5Z690. This isn't the most obvious place, but if you click on here, where it says about the N5Z690, this opens up a whole new panel and tells you about the devices you've got connected. So it will say here, NZXT devices, so this is for the specific NZXT type header on the motherboard, of which this one has two, and each header will support up to 40 addressable RGB lights. So we've got nothing connected on there, they're open. Third party devices, so this is what they refer to as your standard 5 volt addressable RGB header, and also your standard 12 volt RGB header. Now if you go into either of these, click on the settings cog here, and you can configure the port accordingly. So first of all, it was going to ask you what type of device have you actually got connected to your addressable RGB header? Now, it could be anything, cable cones, case lights, AIO, light strips, etc. I've chosen fans here. We do actually have some fans connected, and these are the Johnsbo ZF120s we reviewed a little while back. So in this instance, you click on fan, then you can do advanced setup, and possibly you can see from the uh, the video footage there, which hopefully is going to be alongside this. You can now see how many LEDs you've got. So it makes, makes the LEDs look as they should do. So I've got the LED count set to nine. And the way you work it out is if you move it down to one, you'll see on the fan or actually on the RGB, only one of your LEDs is illuminated. So basically just slide the slider along until you see all of the RGBs lit up on your intended device, which is connected on that particular output. So there we go. I believe we're on eight. Yeah, eight it is rather than nine. So leave it at eight. Obviously, if your fans have got more RGB, then increase the number. You can go to a maximum of 40. That is the maximum that can be controlled on a header. So set it to 80, click on save, and there we go. So now your addressable RGB header is set up. The same goes for the 12 volt one. So if you're using 12 volt RGB rather than five volt addressable gain, We've not got anything configured here. You can go into it, do the same sort of thing. So if you've maybe got something different, so a light strip on here, for example, you can then go in 
and click Save. And because RGB is fixed in terms of it doesn't have the addressable nature of it, you can just adjust things like brightness and the uh, type that is doing so, breathing, fading, pulse, etc. And you can do the same on here as well. So if you want to, you can set various different things. So the spectrum wave, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Obviously set up those to your particular liking, and then you can synchronize that with the rest of the NZXT stuff if you've got it. Because this particular profile is the NZXT purple, you can of course set this to maybe fixed. Choose purple as it is there, and the same for the light strip. If you choose the default one, again, it's going to go back to white as its default. You can choose whichever settings you want there, make adjustments to it. Ideally, I would say for um, making things a little bit easier, set up your own profile. You can, of course, choose any of the defaults. You've got Spectrum Wave, NZXT Purple again, Red Alert, which flashes between red and white. You've also got Vaporware, which is basically pale blue and you've got mermaid which is kind of green so that is the nzxt lighting you've also got options for overall lighting control this is actually quite useful so if you do want to set a profile or create a profile you could if you wanted to create a profile called no lights and you can actually get these so they turn on at certain times of the day or night so maybe if you want to after midnight or something you want to set all your lighting to be off then you can do that and then obviously you can set another profile so that your lighting comes back on at a certain time in the morning, like an alarm clock, that kind of thing. We'll take a look at that later in the profile sync section. So anyway, that effectively is lighting. So let's go back to our uh, default. Actually, no, we'll go back to Spectrum Wave. There we go. So that's addressable RGB unicorn puke. Hopefully that kind of explains some of it there. You can go in and tweak things. Obviously, you'll see a real-time effect on your fans or your headers, etc., as you do it. And you can change things like your speed. So let's put that down to the slowest for a nice fade. So that is lighting. Let's now go over to cooling, which again is going to be something which a lot of you are probably coming to this video specifically because you're trying to work out how to control your fans. So again, we've always got profiles available. We're in our active profile mub. Cooling, you've got options here for default. You've got options for silent, performance, and fixed. So fixed will be static speeds. You've got performance, which is effectively um, ramping up and faster fan speeds at the offset of having more noise. You've got silent, which for some people might not be silent, which is probably why you're looking at this. And then you've got obviously default. So we'll go into the default profile. It tells you your CPU temperature and it monitors your GPU temperature, which is handy because you can choose with the fans and individual headers whether they're going to monitor the CPU or whether they're going to monitor the GPU. So if you've got fans at the bottom of your case and you want to maybe keep your GPU cool and ignore CPU temperatures, you can do that. Or if you just want to concentrate on your CPU temperatures and not too bothered about your GPU, obviously you can do the opposite. So let's go and uh, do all of these, go through them one by one. So the first one we've got listed here is our AIO pump. You can change these. You can name them if you want to. There is a little... Uh, icon there you can click on you can call these whatever you want to make life easier currently we don't have AIO connected so it's just left it 100% we can pretty much ignore that if you want to change your settings for your AIO pump you can just drag these across so we're in the custom profile and if you want to you can set it to silent you can set it to performance or custom custom is probably going to be better for some of you so basically you can just drag these down you've got a lot of control and a lot of flexibility, possibly a little bit too much because there's lots of individual settings here. You can change and tweak things around. So you can just make the fan curve or the fan profile, however you want to look at it and set it to whatever suits you. So for instance, with this, we've got the AIO pump. It's gonna be uh, around about 25% activity at about 20 degrees Celsius. And obviously this bottom section here is the temperature up to a maximum of 100 degrees. And on this axis, we've got from 0% to 100% fan speed or pump speed in this particular instance. So what this means is roughly translated where these dots are. So at 80 degrees Celsius, the AIO is going to try and run at a 100% operation, which hopefully makes sense. And obviously lower down, so 50 degrees here, as you can see, 50 degrees Celsius, 
this translates to 44% on the AIO pump. This works the same for pumps and or fans, depending whether they're PWM or DC controlled. The effect is basically the same, whichever you do. So obviously tailor these to your own particular noise preferences. For the AIO, obviously you're pretty better off leaving that configured for CPU temperatures. Obviously GPU temperatures is a bit pointless for an AIO, unless you've got an AIO connected to your graphics card, in which case this would make perfect sense. Anyway, let's move on. So the same deal pretty much for all of these. As you can see, I've actually named some of these. So this is fan connector three, this is fan connector four, and I've already changed those. So these are the top fans. So all of the fans that are in the top of my case are connected to this header, and all the fans in the bottom of the case are connected to this header. So I can control the intake at the bottom versus the exhaust at the top. And as you can see here at the moment, in these particular ranges, we've got a little bit of positive pressure there because the bottom fans are pushing in more air than the top fans are exhaust in. This is sometimes better for dust because you're creating positive pressure, so you're not sucking in dust at every possible groove or cutout in the case. CPU, let's take a look at that. If you again, if you want to, you can choose any of these particular fixed ones, silent performance, etc. We're in custom, so we can go ahead and move this however we want to. So obviously the higher this is, the noisier the fan is going to be and the uh, the more active it's going to be. Choose whichever works for you. I generally try to do kind of run about 20% at 20 degrees, 40% at 40 degrees, 60% at 60 degrees and 100% at 70, which is kind of roughly where we are. So we've got this gradual. So when the PC isn't under a lot of load, fans are nice and quiet. As things get warmer, it gradually gets faster and faster until we reach our top speed here at 70 degrees Celsius. For me, this works really well and keeps things nice and quiet. It will also tell you as well what type of connection it is, whether it's PWM or DC, depending on what is connected to the motherboard. So moving down, fan connectors are gonna be exactly the same. So fan connector one and fan connector two. Again, for our top fans here, you can change that, name it, whatever you want to. And I've got it set to custom again. So a very similar sort of curve there. You can make this a little bit less if you want to, to keep your fans a little bit quieter, should you want to. These fans that we've got in this particular system are actually quite quiet anyway, so that's absolutely fine. You don't need to click apply or save. It is all done automatically and done for you. So it will remember your settings if you close all this down and you do get a reading there. So our CPU temperature at the moment is about 25 degrees Celsius. A little graph there. So you can see at the moment at 25 degrees Celsius, we're roughly about 25, 26% of the fan speed. So fan speed again, top to bottom and temperatures from zero up to 100 degrees Celsius. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Uh, the bottom fans, now this is where it gets a little bit different on this particular instance because I've got the bottom fans because this is a chimney style case, i.e. air is being blown up from the bottom and funneled out through the top. So it's a top to bottom layout. So I've actually got the bottom fans configured to keep the GPU under control. So as you can see here, I've got the uh, option here, configure for GPU rather than CPU. So this is monitoring the GPU. So the fan curve here is gonna be a little bit higher possibly. Graphics cards generally tend to be a little bit warmer than CPUs, especially if they're air cooled or they have a zero fan technology. A lot of them are only designed for, so the fan kicks in at like 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. So again, this is a similar sort of deal. If the graphics card gets to around about 100 degrees, 90 degrees, then it's gonna be at full blast. Graphics cards generally tend to run a bit hotter, so that's why the curve is a little bit less. Hopefully the graphics card fans themselves will take care of most of this, so it shouldn't need to ramp up. Again, configure this to your liking. If you find that when you're playing games, it's a little bit too noisy on your fans, you can maybe reduce the, the, uh, the curve a little bit more, or if you find your graphics cards getting a little bit too hot, then do what I'm doing now, and you can increase the, uh, the fan speeds a little bit earlier. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is saying PWM because it's PWM fans. I think that is pretty much it for cooling. Again, you can choose your active profiles. So depending which profile is active, you will be able to change these individually. So yeah, you can switch those through. So that is it for cooling. Uh, next is gonna be keyboard. We don't have an NZXT keyboard, but if you do have one, you can configure your lighting, etc. in here. Same goes for the mouse, if you've got an NZXT mouse, or if you've got one of the NZXT capture cards, such as the NZXT signal, you can configure all of that within the cam center. So that makes a lot of sense, and the same for monitor as well. 
So now let's go back to the settings page. So we clicked on the cog at the bottom, so settings. I did say we'd go through these. So we've got the mini mode option. So if you want to launch mini mode, you can do. This will stay on the screen all the time when games are running, etc. So basically like an overlay, you can choose whether that is in dark or light theme. Dark probably runs better, to be honest with you, in most instances. And you've also, you can choose your own custom colors. So if you want the, uh, the text to be one color, and the readings be another, you can do all kinds of uh, crazy stuff there. Entirely up to you what it is you do. And if you want to just reset it if you don't like it. Uh, display opacity, so this is how, how see-through it is. So again, you can see you can choose to be a very low opacity. So if you just want to keep a very slight eye on things, you don't want to be too distracting, you can reduce it. If you want this to be uh, up front and center, then again, you can increase that how you wish. You can also change the sizing as well. So if your monitor doesn't scale particularly well, or you're running at a different resolution than what your native desktop is, then again, you can choose all those things should you want to. Tidy up to you. And you can also choose to have it vertical. And you can actually move it around and get it to dock. If you want to, you've got snap to edges. So you can usually get it to snap on. Yeah, there you go. See, if you move it over a little bit, it'll pop back in. And the same goes for if you do it in the horizontal. So you just get out there and it locks itself in place. You can also lock it as well, so it won't move. So that's fixed in position. Again, use that however you want to. You can configure those individual panels. So if you don't want to see all of it, maybe you just want to see your CPU temperature and possibly your GPU temperature, you can reduce it right down. So it just shows those two. Again, configure this entirely how you want to. It's pretty flexible in that regard, but yeah, ultimately do what it is that you need it to be able to show, if that makes any sense. All right, notifications. So this is for if you've actually signed up to NZXT, you can register. There is a sign up option here. And whenever there's a notification or they're trying to flog you something, you'll get a little ding on your bell there. You also got the NZXT firmware. This I don't think works correctly because I'm actually currently on the firmware version 1.0. 3.0 or something along those lines. So that doesn't appear to be working. Maybe that is for the version of the CAM software. Not entirely sure, but that doesn't appear to relate to what the motherboard actually has on it. So I would ignore that. Then we've got profile sync. So this is where it actually is quite interesting. So like I said earlier, if you want to configure this so that maybe at midnight or something, all of your lights turn off and then they come back on at say nine o'clock in the morning or something, you can configure that to do that. So with profile sync, you set your profile, you can choose to auto launch. So maybe if you're launching a specific game and you want your lights to turn off or you want your fans to ramp up, you can do all that kind of stuff. So with this auto launch, you can choose what actually is affected. So your lighting and your cooling in this particular instance. So we could set it so that it's in unicorn puke all the time when you're in Windows. And then when you launch a specific game, or a specific time it changes. So yeah, you can basically get it all to profile sync in there and you can also add new profiles as well. And you've got options there to rename it or edit it, etc. So yeah, uh, that's quite a nice way of configuring your fans to do certain things at certain times or your lighting, etc., etc. Also you've got support. So you can, if you've got an issue with NZXT, you can put in all your details there and you can post a uh, question there to NZXT. And also there's an option for beta as well. So there is actually a beta version, like I said earlier, you can download that from the site that just basically opens up a new link if you want to do it. Also, you've got the version at the bottom, so it tells you what is in there and also what has been updated. So if you're finding problems with a specific piece of hardware or software, you can look through and see what actually was adjusted and what bug fixes there were, etc., etc. So that is uh, pretty much it for the NZXT software. If you've got any comments or questions, put them in that comment section below, or better still, if you want a quicker response, head over to our Discord and we'll help you out as best we can. So there you go, there is an overview of the NZXT software, the CAM software as it's known. Hopefully it's been uh, of value to you. I actually haven't used this before very, very recently, so it was good for me to actually go through and have a kind of brush up and work out what was going on, so then I could relay that to you. I'm sure there's gonna be those of you out there which are gonna be glad of this video because they've had the same questions or are slightly confused on where things are, or where the settings are. It took me ages to find out where the actual settings were for the RGB headers on the motherboard. It could be made so much simpler, I guess, but 
I'm assuming they want you to try and uh, stick with their ecosystem and buy the NZXT products. Hence, that is what they're trying to do, make some money and stay in business, which hopefully they will do. And hopefully they will improve the software. And as it does, we'll try and update this video if there's uh, anything we need to update. If not, I think this is gonna serve as a pretty decent reference point. But again, like I said earlier, if there's any comments or questions, please do feel free to get in touch. I would suggest for a much quicker response, go through our Discord, you can join up, it's completely free. Head into one of the tech support rooms and post your questions in there, and uh, we look forward to seeing those. Otherwise, I think that's gonna be it. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.